Hello lovely people, how are you all today? I hope you're well. I'm just having a quick little visit to the garden this afternoon. Um, in gorgeous sunshine once again with a lovely little breeze. It's absolutely beautiful this afternoon. But the weather's been a bit weird. I mean it's a bit of a it's a bit of a juggling act at the moment because last night and again tonight were due quite chilly temperatures down to about five degrees centigrade. But then in the daytime again I'm really really quite warm. And it's so tricky because I don't live immediately next to the garden. So in an ideal world, um, you know, I'd be able to come to the garden in the morning, throw the cold frame wide open, let everything get on with itself during the day nice and cosy, then come back in the evening, close it all up and keep that snugness in for them overnight. But that's not very practical. Ah. And I'm sure there are loads of you who are in the same situation. So we're just having to play that kind of juggling game at the moment. And, you know, it's like have your fleece on standby. And if you can, you know, get to your garden in the evening and, and pop the fleece over any of your tender things that are out and close up your greenhouse and cold frame, etc, etc. But bear in mind the next day if it's going to get hot, you're going to need to take it all off again. And I did have um, about five or six of my little cucumber plants I brought down about a week or so ago to harden off. Unfortunately, it's actually been getting too hot in the cold frame for them and they've <laughs> they've killed over. Oh, what is going on this year? Fortunately, I've got about another, I don't know, 10, 15 plants at home. I did sow loads. So I have decided that for now, um, it would be easier if I can leave the cold frame open all the time. But I have to bear in mind the nighttime temperatures. So I think what I'm going to do for now is all of those myriad seedlings that are at home still, all the squash, peppers, cucumbers, all the really tender things, is just leave them at home for now. Because if I bring them down, I'm going to have to make sure the cold frame is open shut, open shut, open shut. And I, I can't always get here. So rather than risk it, they can stay at home. And was also thinking that I last at the end of last summer someone threw out some debris netting so I'm thinking about putting that on the top of the cold frame as a bit of shade so that I want it warm in there but I don't want it hot because everything's cooking oh my goodness can't win this year <laughs> freezing cold boiling hot seeds not coming up seeds that come up and then die in the cold frame Arrgh! never mind never mind yeah, I'll just sit on those things at home for now. I did pop down really briefly this morning and I knew it's going to be a hot day, so I did open up the cold frame straight away this morning. And the reason I was here this morning was because my lovely ironmonger friend gave me a lift down here with all my compost. Yay! So nice. Um, actually, as we were driving down here, it's only a little drive, but we got chatting and it came up that he's vegetarian too. So we were just talking about favourite recipes, favourite vegetables. He was saying he would love to grow some. So I said, you should put your name on a waiting list for an allotment. Anyway, we got to the garden, just at one of the main gates. Didn't actually come in to it. It was just a case of dump off those bags at the gate and I'll wheelbarrow them down to my plot. But as I opened the gate, his face lit up and he just stood there gazing. He was like, oh, it's paradise, it's gorgeous. Oh my goodness, I can't believe this is in London. Oh, it was lovely. His reaction was priceless. So yeah, he said he's going to get in touch with the council and ask to be put on the waiting list for allotment. Yay! Oh, I was so, so grateful for that lift. You know, it's, it's one of those things in life, isn't it? What goes around comes around. So I hope that him having done me that favour this morning, that he has a great day and that someone does something for him today. Yay! And on that subject as well, thank you, I've been given a few packets of herb seeds, some of which I'm going to get going today. Uh, some of them I've left at the flat, stupidly, from Rene in America. She sent me a load of um, basil, different types of basils. There's um, 
trying to remember now. There's a lemongrass. There's, ah, what else? And then mint. So they're things which I might actually start in pots rather than the bed, especially the mint. I'm not going to start that in the bed. But yes, so a huge thank you. I haven't been to the nursery yet to spend my vouchers. I'm so excited about that. But here's another lovely thing. One of the girls down here, um, Kay, who you saw me at the garden centre with a couple of months ago, she does some volunteering on a Sunday and on her way back she drives past the very garden centre so we've arranged that she'll meet me there to give me a lift back to the garden with all my purchases. <laughs> she'll probably buy something herself as well, one or two bits and pieces I'm sure. So yeah, it's all looking wonderful in terms of just people being lovely. I love it love kindness it makes the world go round so we should all let's just all spread it far and wide whenever we can a bit of kindness and a bit of love they don't half go a long way right i think it may be time to start sowing some little seeds come on why don't you pull up a chair while i get sewing and we can sit in the sun together listen to the birds have a chat and generally just have a nice afternoon hanging out together. Come on. So, just before I get a sewing, I thought it would be a good chance to um, explain my vision. <laughs> vision for the herb bed. So, what I'd like eventually is, as you can see where I've put the lavender down this side, I'd like to do the whole edge of the bed in lavender. So it's quite a formal sort of lavender hedge boxing everything else in and then within the bed all sorts going on so obviously the taller things that end because this is the south end gets most of the sun this is where all the grit is and the more mediterranean herbs um that's the plan eventually so with the lavender i either take cuttings or you know next year if i get another easter egg get some more lavender plants but until they've filled out the plan for at least this year, possibly next year, possibly the next sort of two or three years, is between them and then all along that aside, I'm going to sow a load of chives. I love chives anyway. I don't love them this much, but I love them. I think the flowers are gorgeous. And I just thought, actually, until I've got more lavender, until it's really grown, it will make a nice edging for everything. The seeds I'm going to sow today, I am going to sow them in straight lines, just so that I know where they are and what's coming up. And then eventually when they're big enough, I'll, I'll just move them around because I, I do want this to be just a lovely little explosion of colour and smells and general gorgeousness. But the other thing that's been occurring to me just in the last couple of days trying to work it is into the middle, it's a little bit far, just a touch too far for me to reach comfortably for harvesting. So I've got in mind one of two options, either sort of here and then another one there is to have some sort of paving stone, something that I can sort of step onto and work the plants around it, likewise that end, or even just a narrow little brick path, maybe only two bricks wide right up the centre so I can access everything really really easy because this is all although I want it to be a garden to enjoy through the summer with the smells and the colours and everything it is going to be as practical as all the veg beds in terms of harvesting so just thinking ahead of how am I going to be able to harvest on that subject the other area I'd like to change eventually is the path so between the herb bed and the deck there's that grass path still. What I'm on the lookout for now is bricks. I'm on the lookout all the time because eventually I'd like to take that grass out and have a brick path. I love my grass paths. They're all gonna stay. They're great, they're a living environment. They're great for the ground feeding birds, what have you, what have you. But that path there always takes a real hammering because I'm backwards and forwards to the compost bins and backwards and forwards to you know dump stuff on the deck sit on the deck what have you so it does get a lot of wear it's still quite weedy I think eventually it can go so I think the textures of 
the wooden deck, then the bricks, and then hopefully eventually lavender spilling everywhere. I think it would be really, really pretty, but most importantly, it's still really, really practical. So if I can find enough bricks, I think maybe just a little trail of bricks through the middle of this bed too. But enough of fantasizing, and I think it's good to have a plan, but you need to be adaptable as well. And, and like I say, this week I've thought about it and thought, oh, it's not brilliantly practical in terms of reaching in. So be prepared to change, but have your dream, have your vision. Right, time to get sewing. So I've got a load of chives to go around the edges, which I'll do last, because I want to um, move my planks along. So firstly, at the front here, I'm going to pop in some thyme and some margarine. Then we'll get to that little bit that's got some compost. Like I was explaining the other day, this soil, if you can call it such, is still really lumpy. Oh, look at it. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Uh, far too lumpy to sow direct into. So I've literally just put a tiny bit of compost there, cover it with a bit more, just let the seeds get going, hopefully. And then, like I say, once we're established, they can move around a bit, hop up, and um, end up in slightly better positions. Right then, let's start with the time. <laughs> I'm gonna walk the plank. Now I'm gonna start from the other end. I'm right-handed, I like to start in my rows the same every time. Isn't that a silly? So really tiny seed. Let me show you. Can you see how tiny it is? Now if I just put that onto the bare soil, it would just be lost in all the cracks. So I've given all these, I've made little drills. I've just basically pressed a cane very slightly down into the compost to make a drill. And then I'll just cover them with only a tiny bit more compost. They only need about centimetre of covering. Right, that's more than enough. So yeah, I've given all of it a little bit of a soak already. Oh, time at the front, margin at the back. I haven't got any labels to hand. Margarine. I'll show you these seeds as well, they're so tiny. Oh, and the wind's picking up. Don't want to lose any in the breeze. Look, they're actually quite like, um, they're quite similar to little brassica seeds in a way. And they're very round. But much smaller than your normal brassica seeds. Well, not normal brassica seeds, and brassica seeds. See what I mean about the reach? Right into the middle is just a little bit too much and you know, I don't want to be straining my back to harvest my gorgeous herbs. Otherwise I'll be using herbs for um, backache. Right, let's give those a little bit of a cover. Really not much, just pinch that compost back over them. Once this bed is sewn, I can then um, move back onto bed number three, which is where the two peas are. Because oh, all the underplanting and, and sewing underneath the two peas needs doing in the next couple of days. It's non stop, isn't it? Isn't that fab? Okay, let's go on to the other bits. So amongst the seeds I've been given, I've been given some of these um, seed tapes to try. Where, let me show you a bit more closely. I know some of you are familiar with these, but it's like, it's almost like a tissue paper with the seeds sort of meshed in the middle. You plant the whole thing. Now I would never normally have bought these, um, but like I say, they've been gifted. I've got, parsley, 
what's that one dill and savory i don't know if it's winter or summer savory but it's i'm going to go in order of height so yeah it'd be really interesting to see how they do i know there's loads of you who make your own versions using kitchen roll or what have you good on you so again i've just where does it start <laughs> I've just given the soil a bit of a damping. Oh, I should have brought a pen with me, shouldn't I? Because I won't use the whole thing and I need to mark the... I need to mark the tape. Do you know what? Let me go and get a pen because otherwise I'm going to be cutting that off and I'll have no idea later on what it is. That's all my kit. So that's going to be the parsley. That's going to be the dill. And the savoury. So... Let's have a look. How much do we want? It does feel really peculiar doing this. But I suppose as well, the great thing about this is it's kind of ready... What's the word? Where have I put my pen now? I just brought a pen with me. Yeah, I was going to say it's ready spaced, isn't it? I've literally just gone to the shed to get a pen. Oh, Vivian. Right, hold that thought while I find my pen. <laughs> oh my goodness, there are some days you think, I really shouldn't have got up this morning. Where's my blimmin' pen gone? Right, everyone look. Oh, look, I'm crashing with lavender. Everyone look for my pen. Oh, I see it. There we go. So what's this one? Parsley. Parsley. And then all I'm going to do is just, with a bit of compost from the bucket, I'm going to cover it. But for now, I'll use a bit of that just to hold it in place so it don't blow away. Again, these only want to go down about five centimetres or so. This is the dill. Oh, you're going to lose that pen, Vivi. This, this does feel like the weirdest way of sowing seeds. Dill. But again, I think it's one of those things where, you know, if I'm just thinking of, say, my great aunt, someone like her with really quite horrible arthritis in her fingers, that actually this would be a really great thing for her because you're not having to, you know, if you've lost some dexterity in the fingers through, to, you know, whether it's arthritis or carpal tunnel or, or like, a couple of years ago when I broke my wrists and ended up with tenosynovitis. At least this way you could still, I think it's just about manageable. Yeah. Savoury. Why have you gone a little naughty thing? Some compost. Oh, oh, comes apart quite easily. I suppose that's the moisture getting to it. Have I just doubled that over? No. Right, let's get some compost and get these buried. Ah, well, it definitely feels like the season of giving because. Um, just put in here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight lilies. They're supposed to be, I believe they're supposed to be a summer variety. This is just to mark them. So these were given to one of my other pot neighbours, Free, when he bought some fruit bushes. He'd kind of forgotten about them when they were sat in his shed. They don't look brilliantly well, 
but I thought, well, and it basically he gave them to me because surplus to his requirement. So I thought, well, they don't look particularly healthy, but until this bird is chocolate herbs and other flowers, I thought they might as well go in, give them a go. But what I'm going to do just around and across the top is so a load of calendula. This is a load of saved seed from last year's harvest. Yeah, I'm just going to sow this calendula because then if they do come up, they'll come up through the calendula. So the hopefully the lilies will be, you know, a couple of feet tall and the calendula a foot, foot and a half. And then I thought, well, also then if the if the lilies don't come up, I'll um, hopefully still have some calendula. So a little bit of colour in this end of the bed. Yay, hopefully. It's definitely the season of giving, isn't it? What's really nice is um, I've had seed from friends all over the world, which is lovely. And I've been able to pass some of my seed onto them. So it's, <laughs> it's like, um, I don't know, it's like some kind of adoption scheme. I'm getting updates on how the seeds I've sent elsewhere are doing. Yay, it's lovely, it's lovely to hear that those tomatoes, for instance, that I bought back from France are doing happily in all parts of the UK and in some parts of the United States and in some parts of Canada and in some parts of France. Some of them have gone back to France. It's a joy. It's one of the joys of saving seed is being able to save enough for yourself and extra to give to your friends. I told you, it's all about the loving and giving at the moment. The more you love and give, the more it comes back. I think I'm gonna give that a little bit more cover. Not a huge amount. Oh, I'm sitting on a rock. <laughs> I told you, I'm having one of those days. I'm doing this really cack-handedly. See, now I'm down here, I won't want to get up. Let's bring this around. Beautiful breeze, beautiful bird song. It's just beautiful to be out. There's no race, no hurry. Just enjoy it. And have a little lie down from time to time. <laughs> Chives next. Thank you. 
Well, I'm glad uh, finally to be starting to get something into that little herb bed. Oh, I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if anything will grow. <laughs> I was thinking about it as I was just sowing those last bits of seeds earlier on that I think my confidence has taken a bit of a knock this year because of, you know, that compost and the total fail of tomatoes, leeks and celery. And then I brought half my celeriac down to start hardening off and it got wiped out on a hot day. And that first sowing of brassicas came up and they all got mashed by the slugs. Oh my goodness. I've come down today and the foxes have been mashing the place to bits. So I don't know, it feels... I don't think this is going to be my year somehow. But like I say, it's really lovely to get that herb bed started because I haven't grown herbs for years and years, not really since I think in my mum's garden or my nan's garden. So it's going to be fun to sort of do the research, find seeds, find cuttings, you know, find whatever I can to put in there and enjoy looking after the plants, enjoy harvesting and using them and finding new uses for things. So. That's a really positive little corner of the garden at the moment. Yay! I mean, there are loads and loads of positives. I think it's just, it's just given me the heebie-jeebies a bit with <laughs> all the fails so far. Honestly, I've never had it like this. So I think, I think because it's the sort of tried and trusted things like tomatoes and celery, because of them failing, it's kind of made me feel nervous about everything. But, I'm trying not to be, I'm trying <laughs> so hard not to be, and I'm sure some of you guys have experienced this in the past as well, where you just start to wonder if anything is going to grow at all. I'm sure in like four, six weeks time or so, mid middle of June, end of June, when things are greening up and showing that I'll be feeling much, much more confident. In the meantime, I'm going to go and buy myself some herbs. Thank you very much to my anonymous voucher giver. Thank you very much to Kay, who's going to give you a ride home. Yeah, it's all good. Staying positive is the only way to be. I hope your seedlings are doing okay. Don't forget, keep an eye on the forecast. We've got some low nighttime temperatures. If needs be, get some duvets on your seeds. I will see you all again really soon, I hope. Maybe next time with some herbs? I don't know. Will I see before then? I don't know. I will see you whenever I see you, but I will look forward to it. In the meantime, have fun, whatever you're up to in your gardens. Bye-bye, Rusty. That was Rusty just jumping down. Just keeping half an eye on him because he's hurt his little paw, bless him. He's been limping. Yes, I hope your seedlings are doing great for you. Look after yourselves, look after your seedlings, and I'll see you soon.